welcome. Today we are going to discuss LIBOR, banking, banksters, the favourite sport of the, the rebel, the, rebel the, 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 the retired revolutionary, I don't know, the people we all love to hate. Absolutely. But let me think about that. Actually, it's a sport of socially responsible people actually having a look at this and this whole thing that's been going on since. Well, forever actually. It's just coming to a head now because the greed and the greed. So why were the banks grown? We know, we know the, the, the official story why the banks were saved, but uh, uh, well, basically banks cannot fail. They're allowed to get the huge, biggest subsidies known. I mean, well, the steelworks had to go to the wall, the ship builders had to go to the wall, but the banks, no, they can stay. Because we we'll subsidise them. We leave the society are in banks. Um, we don't know what would happen. Is the actual truth. Well, the story is that the, 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 the cash machines would stop spewing out money. Well, that must have happened in other countries before now. Germany? We didn't have cash machines. No, but in, in, what, in fairly recent years. You know? Yeah, cash machines didn't evolve of their own accord. We invented them. Yes, I appreciate that. What it would mean is that you would have to get your wages in cash. Hmm. I dare say that there could be a, a tricky weekend and a country Everybody, everybody would get thrown out of their houses. Why? Um, your cars would all get repossessed. No, because it's banks are lending to you, and the whole point well, is they go, they go down the tubes, they've got to try and bring all the money into the people they owe money for, so the whole thing would fall apart. Pity that. Uh, I'm not so sure of that. I mean, if the government took control, if, if the government ran the banks for the benefit of industry, um, and getting people jobs for the benefit of society, rather than if we actually have a look how much they've creamed off, they, they ruined it in 2007, 2008, to the extent, I mean, it's about a trillion and a half. This government's in hot too. So what do they do then? Um, they hang on to all the money, give themselves huge bonuses, and just keep stealing more. Now, if you take another look at a group like that, go to Italy, they call called Nakamura and the Mafia and all the rest of it. Um, and here, I'm sorry, when you, these people are criminals. They've been criminally ne negligent at best. They're, they're, they're corrupt. They should, they should be prosecuted, and if they haven't got a law, make a law in that respect and take everything I, I, off them. I keep hearing that we can't prosecute them. Of course we can. I keep hearing this thing, I'm sorry. Well, the FBI, the Americans are going to prosecute them. I mean, yeah, no, the Americans we, send people to jail for 30 years at a time. Last week, that guy, the guy who sponsored the cricket tour. Like, like Madoff yeah, in that. Yeah. Uh, well, why do you think they send him to jail? He, he went to jail. The guy who ran Enron. They, they've gone to jail for 30 years. Why? Because they, they got caught. Because they got caught. Because they got caught. That's all. Not for what they did. Because they get caught and then it puts at risk all the other parasites. So there has to be a sacrifice. Day. Yeah, they are the sacrifice. But the system carries on and will have an index. Look, you hear all that garbage from at the moment. We'll have you, an investigation you know, and we'll look at it and we'll sort it out. You'd think you'd had a Marxist education. No, I, I'm just, sorry, I, I just don't wear rose-tinted glasses. You see a bunch of crooks, um, and they're there. they pay themselves ridiculous wages. They pay themselves near what some people really, really work their whole life off for. Mm -hmm. And then, because they get that, and then because they've been so good enough to, to give up the, the, the fancy champagne and actually come into their work and do their job, um, they then give them a bonus. And then, then you know, I mean... I mean Ridiculous! Okay, well, 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 Twenty-two well, million. Well, talking all right, Phil. We know, we, we know that. But can we go it's beyond the rant here and, and, and think? Right? Is there anything really changed as a result of last week's revelations about uh, fiddling LIBOR? No, no. And no. it's not last week's revelations. No, I mean it's going on for seven years. Well, it's been talked it's about taken too. Seven years to surface. The first indication was two thousand and five. It was first talked about too. And, um, you know, I mean, it's the usual. It's politicians protecting their buddies in the bank, protecting their politician buddies, protecting their buddies in the bank. Protecting and, and, and protecting uh, their buddies in the media, and the buddies in the media are protected because they pay the police and they go around and they borrow horses for uh, the police horses to go riding for the weekend. And the, que the question is really simple. Why will they not have a judge led inquiry into the banks? Oh, because we need to get it dealt with quickly. In other words, we need to get it hidden again so it can continue as usual because you, the public, can he handle the truth. That's what it's about. They don't want to the truth. If they're fiddling white boy, they're fiddling everything. <laughs> they're fiddling everything. Can you not remember 1971? Ted Heath. 
the unacceptable face of capitalism. Mm. It goes back to the um, South Sea Bubble, or 1929, 1930, South Sea Bubble, even back in the 16th century. Well, Ted, Teddy's government was remarkably liberal. Yeah. They were actually more left wing than the uh, last Labour government. You need, you, need, you, need, you need the Judge White inquiry because you need it all out in the open. Now, the fact of the matter is, all oh, this bullshit about trust in banks, all oh, that we need the public to get their trust back in banks and that. I never trusted a bank. Every time I went to a bank, I knew it was getting ripped off. And then, I mean, anybody who's been, you know, if you're poor and your direct debits get bounced and things, as soon as these things start happening, you soon discover how the banks are screwing you. Yeah, the you banks have never given a shit about anybody but the banks. If you allow a company to look after the dangerous drugs cabinet in a, in a chemist, over a weekend, you know, with the keys. My first job. You would. My first job was working for the Bank of Scotland, and I can still remember, in my naivety at the age of 17, looking at the accounts and, and, and who had money and who didn't, and discovering that the most valuable customers, even back in 1963, the most valuable customer was the one who owed the bank the largest amount of money, not the one who had the, had the largest amount of money, but the person who had borrowed the most. Yeah. And that was Gordon Duff. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, and, it's, and it's not just here. I mean, when you're talking about that, sit, 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 uh, on a, a simple um, example of that was going into a hotel in Amsterdam, booking it, and then when you you know you've gone in and they, they want your credit card, which they do so. You go, and I said, sorry, I don't have a credit card, but I've got a few debit cards. Oh, panic! I said, if I haven't got the money, you're quite happy to take a card that says I haven't got the money, but you won't take the card that shows I've got the money. Well, is this, a, is this the difference between a debit card and a credit card? Yeah, you know, and it's that whole thing, it's just what you said, you've got the money or you're, you're, you're actually... But you're, more, well, you're a more valuable customer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's, you know, it's all our fault because we've got so much personal credit, blah, 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 blah. I'm oh, sorry, I remember the days when you went into the bank for a business loan. And the first thing he said to you is, do you own your own house? Because they wanted to make sure if you defaulted on the loan, you had collateral. Mm. Two no, weeks I mean, ago, I got a letter from my credit card company saying, we're putting your credit card limit up to, yeah. um, if you don't want us to do that, please tell us. Mm. Now, who's going to say no to having the availability more credit? I got the, same, I, I got the same letter, but I'm sure it's a smaller amount than yours. But the reason, the reason for that is because the banks make their money out of loaning us money and ripping us off on interest rates. There's also the bonus bit. You the, know, banks, like, the banks would have mm -hmm. failed had they not worked that system to the nth degree. That's where it all comes from. It comes from them loaning out too much money to make too much money because they're greedy. Well, look, is there, you know, there is an undercurrent of certain people, independists, as we'll call them, who are keen for Scotland to have its independence that have this optimistic, sunny view of the future. If Scotland was independent, we could free of the banks. But that's nobody's nothing. ever afraid of banks. Nobody's ever afraid of banks. Governments, governments it's a world. Countries have to get themselves together. And I'm quite sure well, there are. Well, but could we change the culture in Scotland? Would we be starting with a blank sheet of paper? No, I don't think so. We already have an elite. Angus Grosser is uh, the most powerful man in Scotland, and yet 90% of the people have never heard of him. I, I remember. In fact, another thing's popped in in my head. Who's somebody I know who was a bank manager who got well slapped for doing stuff he shouldn't have done. But that was because he sent people the bank wouldn't loan money to, to people who were, were prepared to loan money to them. Say that again? Right. The bank, the bank wouldn't loan Longer, longer, or something like that. public house. Right. It was policy that they wouldn't loan to people who owned public houses. But this particular bank manager knew somebody who would be quite happy to because the equity was there to cover his loan, and I was introduced to this guy, and the bank somehow found out. He'd done it with quite a few people, and the bank wasn't really happy because he was helping his customers not to be customers of the bank. Right? But as far as I'm concerned, he was a great bank manager because he helped me find a way through the problem mm -hmm. I had. But I, I can remember the days when you walked into the bank, mm -hmm. you went to the bank manager, you said, I want to borrow 10 grand for a week, two weeks a month, what will it cost me? And he made the decision. And then one day I walked into the bank and said, I want to borrow five grand for a month. And the guy went, ah, well, the manager's not here. Where's the manager? Oh, he's up in George Street, and you don't have a business account, and the decision will take six weeks. But I need the money in two days. Mm. Sorry, you can't do that. But 
contact him, he'll tell you, I pay my way, I always, you know, I've never defaulted on my, can't do it. So 10 weeks later, which was basically eight weeks too late, they said I couldn't have the money anyway. Mm. Fair enough. Look, okay, what about trying, you know, the old crystal ball? Where do you see this banking issue in a year's time? I'm not very optimistic because there's a lot more to come out with it, Stuart, with people like you talking about getting business loans. And they're I mean, like, would they not just get swept under the carpet like your carpet? Oh, yeah. I don't think there's any room left under the carpet. No. I think, I think the, the lifesaver in this one will be the fact that Levison has done the job of cauterizing that wound. It really hasn't solved anything, but it's allowed the public to believe something's being done. The politicians, media, police, and now it's the bank's turn to get they exposed. Mass sacrifice. It's, it's why the Tories are desperate not to have an independent, judicially led. Cameron is desperate not to make the same mistake when he set up Levison in too much of a hurry. He's, he's kicking himself. Yeah, that. but, yeah, but they're, they're inept, the government. Um, and it's like yesterday with Bob Diamond. Why didn't he really say anything? Is it because he doesn't have it? No. But the whole point is he must have a huge amount of information, which could actually do it. Well, particularly Mr. King, who sits there, oh, the great savior that comes in here. I mean, Slipart, what have you been doing for the last decade? You've been the chair of the bank, of, you know, the governor of the Bank of England. There's, there's also the, the problem. I mean, the actual logistics of compliance in a bank must be a complete bloody nightmare. Another reason to break them up into the sections that there are some areas need better policing than other areas. Another reason to break them up. But as far as... You don't see anything of 12 months time in being an improvement. No, because all that will happen is they'll, they'll, you know, they'll keep their hands out of other people's pockets for a wee while. And, and that's then they'll go back to it. As they always do. Yeah, is, it, is this an issue that's going to change the fortunes of the Yes campaign for an independent Scotland by blackening the character of Darling and Brown? It could be used that way. I, I don't think so. I, I hope so, but I don't think so. Because but neither black and him, you black in the model. Neither the two of them are economists, by the way. One's an advocate, and the other is, I think, probably a historian. Uh, he is. No, no, but, but, um, Brown was a history or something like that, I think. Um, I mean, he just did, no. he did politics and he, he worked in media. That's what yeah, he and he has um, not a clue about economics, really. He can talk it, but he doesn't, he doesn't really know. Because if he was that bright, he would know he'd been hoodwinked. Because he was actually going along with it. His last speech as Chancellor to, in 2007 to the Mansion House speech, he was in fraud with his bankers. They're all, well, you can see with Tony Blair, he even got a wee job, two million pounds. So it's not going to make any difference to well, the, the independence. I don't oh, okay. I think, I think the, big, the big question is a question for the Labour Party. If the Labour Party agree to take part in this uh, politician's inquiry, this Westminster inquiry, mm -hmm. if they actually agree to take part in that, they've just admitted that they're as deep in the shit in the same club as the Tories. And they are, of course they are. If they step back, it's, I think it could be a seminal moment for the Labour Party. If they step back and say no, there'll be a, ju a judge that inquiry. We're, we're not supporting this cover up because it'll end up being covered. Mm -hmm. Quite apart from anything else. I mean, I watched Diamonds yesterday. These guys don't have them at all. They don't, they don't have enough information to question them. Oh, you mean the, the panel? The actual. The they didn't know enough, and they don't understand Liber enough. Well, there's a couple of guys there that obviously do. Yeah, but there was one Tory guy there who knew what he was yeah, talking yeah. about, the nuts and bolts, and people walking past desks. And he'll be lent on, and he'll know when to shut up. But this could be another Iraq for, for the Labour Party. I mean, we have 13 years of the Labour government, and they went absolutely bananas there. I mean, you walked in there, you'll say, you used to get a bank manager, I want to borrow money at the house. You need a deposit. Now you walk in, I want money to buy a house. Oh, how much is that? 100,000. There we go, we'll lend you 125. Uh, how much do you earn? It's not enough, but just sign there and self certificate. So the whole thing was a scam because they all got bonuses, commissions off it. You got the thing, you, you, you had the, the mortgage protection, which is now costing billions, and now you've got the that business loan protection. That was the change, and that's happened in my lifetime. 
When I first went to the bank to borrow money, you needed collateral. Exactly. The last time I bought a house, I self-certified it. Boom. Not because I didn't have collateral, because it was quicker. Yes. Well, the reins have been pulled in as far as uh, lending is concerned, but um, I think we've uh, we touched on the subject. I can't, we obviously have, can't agree on that outcome because we don't know what the future lies. But thank you very much for uh, questioning uh, the banks again. Send them together. Let's question them. <laughs> I think they're all bastards. Thank you and goodbye.